Dinosaurs were big, and that's an understatement. Some of the largest dinosaurs, the sauropods, grew up to 40 metres in length and weighed 75 metric tonnes, possibly more. These sizes are unprecedented in the modern world. The only animal to ever surpass them is the blue whale, which does so using buoyancy to counteract gravity. This begs a few questions. Why did dinosaurs get so big? How did they get so big? And why are modern land animals so much smaller? Let's find out. Firstly, why would animals evolve to such large sizes in the first place? There must be a benefit from being large for this adaptation to take place. There's two main reasons why a herbivorous animal would grow to larger sizes. Firstly, to intimidate predators and avoid being eaten. And secondly, to reach higher foliage, gaining access to food unobtainable by their competitors. Both of these are advantageous and explain why herbivorous animals tend to evolve larger over time. This has a cascading effect on predators who have to follow a similar growth pattern in order to adapt for killing larger prey. Still, carnivores rarely grow as large as herbivores, as size just isn't as important as other factors like speed and offense. Applying this to the dinosaurs, we can understand why sauropods would grow to such large sizes, and why carnivores, like the T-Rex, were more than 10 times larger than today's largest predator, the polar bear. But this just teases another question. How did they get so large compared to modern animals? The answer to this question all lies on the sauropods. So let's rephrase the question. What was it about the sauropods that allowed them to get so large? Before we continue, please consider liking the video and subscribing. It does so much for the channel, thank you. One theory suggests that higher oxygen levels are to blame for sauropod gigantism. In theory, higher oxygen levels would allow an animal to get larger, while still supplying all the necessary oxygen to their cells. All that being said, oxygen levels weren't exactly higher during the dinosaur era. They were lower during the Jurassic, then slowly rose to today's level before shooting up in the mid-Cretaceous. We still see huge sauropods like the Supersaurus way before the mid-Cretaceous, so this theory is somewhat flawed. Also, the advanced respiratory systems of dinosaurs meant oxygen levels were never really a major limiting factor of their size anyway. You could argue that atmospheric oxygen contributed to the size of later giant sauropods, but the effect is likely minor. Another theory explains that plant life during this time was incredibly abundant and diverse due to the warm and carbon dioxide rich atmosphere. More food means more fuel, so larger sizes, right? Almost. But this factor is more so limited by the ability of the animal to eat and digest such volumes of plant matter. Now we're getting somewhere. Sauropods were built for digesting huge quantities of food to support their massive weight. This is partly thanks to their small heads, which along with an efficient respiratory system, allowed for very long necks. As discussed earlier, a long neck means less competition for high foliage, so the sauropods could eat all day every day. But their tiny heads were only possible due to a game-changing adaptation. Sauropods didn't chew food. This allowed for smaller heads, as large muscles and strong teeth weren't necessary. It also allowed for more food to reach the stomach in a faster time. Following this, their huge bellies would store and slowly digest the huge quantities of plant matter, providing massive amounts of energy to the body. Sauropods also had air sacs in their bones. This aided in respiration by absorbing exhaled air from the trachea. I'll explain that better in a future video. It also made their bones very light, which allowed them to reach larger sizes without being limited by their weight. Lastly, infant sauropods grew extremely quick. It's possible that they gained up to two tons per year. This would have required an incredibly fast metabolism, but is key in working out how sauropods grew so large. So let's tie this all together. The theory suggests that sauropods were the pioneering group in the dinosaur gigantism. With millions of years of evolution, and likely a fair bit of luck, sauropods became perfectly adapted to pushing the boundaries of size limitations. It's possible that this sent a cascading effect down the dinosaur kingdom, first causing their predators to grow as to compete against the huge sauropods, then resulting in other herbivores growing too as to protect themselves from the growing carnivores. 
So why don't we see animals of these sizes in the modern world? The larger an animal, the more subject they are to extinction from environmental change, as they can't adapt to new environments as easily. Hence why sauropods stood no chance against the asteroid impact 65 million years ago. Every so often, nature whittles out a creature capable of pushing the boundaries of size, which can then send a cascading effect down the animal kingdom. The sauropods are a rare exception in that they were given the time to evolve into behemoths before being wiped out. The unsatisfying truth is that there really is no apparent reason why there are no sauropod-sized creatures in the modern animal kingdom. It appears that sauropods were a one-off group as a result of perfect evolution of the likes that Earth may never see again. They're chillot fakes. There were a lot of facts in this video, but also some controversial theories. I'd love to hear your take on this topic down in the comments section.